was that? That's the second time it's gone off. They never go home, they never go home, they never go home, those, those, those boys. The return match, obviously, New Zealand went around busting heads. They were an absolute disgrace. You don't have to say anything at all about it. You were saying it backstage. uh, (laughs) He wasn't, he wasn't. (laughs) But you, for one, were having none of it. Who wants to see the video of Tyg putting a bunch of All Blacks on on their arses? All right, let's see it. Once more, in midfield, it's Tyg Furlong. And still going and battering All Black jerseys out of the way. In midfield, it's... Tied fell up and still going and battling all black jerseys out of the way. Round of applause for that, everybody. Unbelievable. No big deal, by the way, by the way there. No big deal at all. Just two world players of the year, including the All Blacks captain being swatted aside. What was your own favourite bit of that clip? I, I quite like the Kieran Reid bit. Uh, <laughs> I think my belly gets a good flash there, doesn't it? So, um, <laughs> it's always good to get the gut out on national <laughs> television. Six pack, Ty. Yeah, yeah, of course, exactly. six pack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just the angle of the camera can sometimes, you know. <laughs> now, I would imagine it takes a lot to impress your teammates when you're playing international rugby for Ireland. But surely, a few of them had a had a nice word for you after the video replays of that one. Um, you, don't, you don't have to be too modest now. There must have been a, they, they must have noticed that that was pretty impressive. Yeah, I came up in the the video review and. Um, Joe Schmidt said, oh, here comes WWF. <laughs> <laughs> so not even WWE, WRF, so we're going back <laughs> yeah. to eight years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be my year now yeah, watching yeah. the rest. And uh, so, of course, the lads jumped on the bandwagon and started like Rikishi, the big fat Samoan. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, oh, as you may or may not know, this has been par for the course for Tig ever since his uh, sporting career began because here's some action from the Wexford under 40B yeah. county final between... Horswood and St. Martin's, and I think you'll see that Royal Nugent's commentary actually fits the bill quite nicely for this clip as well. In midfield, it's tied for up. And still going and battering all black jerseys out of the way. So uh, there you go. I mean, what I love about this is the cheeky little dig that the opposition yeah. number three tries to throw your uh, throw you with a bit of a cheap shot there. Uh, now I have heard that you were twelve in that clip, it, it playing under fourteen. Yeah, I was twelve. Um, I always struggled with my weight as a young fella. Uh, <laughs> so I had this weird thing where I was always the same weight as my age. <laughs> so. So you imagine, uh, until I was about 19 or 20, I hit 20 stone when I was 20 once, and yeah, yeah. I kind of left that there yeah, and said yeah, it wasn't yeah. healthy to continue. <laughs> but so I was 12 there, so as you can imagine, the communion and confirmation photos <laughs> at home are quite pudgy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just... Um, I, I actually, know. I've heard of a guy who uh, lives in Moy Cullen in, in County Gold. He's, si- he's over 60 years old. His nickname is still Stone Baby because he was a stone weight when he was born. <laughs> Are you asking Tyke Furlong what weight he was when he was no, born? No, 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 he doesn't need to share that. I just thought everyone needed to hear about Stone Baby, that's all. By the way, good skills As, as there. you were, back to our... We're, uh, we're focusing on the size, incredible skills. Most inter-county footballers can't execute that tackle correctly. I know, I know. Furlong's doing it brilliantly. Uh, you grew up on a farm, as you mentioned. You, you as Murph mentioned, your uncles who were fishermen. That's, is that where the natural physical strength comes from? Yeah, um, my mother comes from this tiny island off Bantry Bay um, in West Cork called Whitty Island. I mean, this place is barren. Um, it's three miles wide by one mile uh, long. And um, I mean, there's only about 20 people live on this island. So um, my uncles are all huge men, hardy men down there. And I think that's where I got my size from. And um, very hardy fishermen. And one of my uncles is the ferryman, ferry in out to the island. Once he gets you there, he has you in the trap. <laughs> he owns the pub on the island. So yeah. any, any penny you spend on Whitty Island is good yeah. to your uncle, basically. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to rent a bike, he has the bikes on the island. <laughs> or if you even want to stay overnight, he has the holiday homes as well. So if you ever think of going down there, he's a good contact to have. But yeah. you, uh, you talked after the New Zealand game about not wanting to get too stereotyped as a, particularly a tight head prop. There seems to be an idea that you're not supposed to get around the field that much and you, sh- you should focus on the basics. Is it something that Joe Schmidt encourages to, to get around, to get a bit more done than, than just locking in the scrum and so on? I think any coach 
his first ask of his tie head will always be to scrum because without the scrum there's no platform they have access into the game if they start getting penalties out of it so um, first and foremost every coach always tells you scrum and, and what you can do outside your, your core duty of scrum line out and rucks really is an added bonus and I don't know. I don't know what is. Um, maybe it's the GAA background or, or whatever that may, maybe helps me to get around a bit. I, I don't know. Um, I, I suppose when I came into the academy, uh, a, cal- a fellow called Colin McEntee in Leinster was looking after me, and he said, well, "Look, this can be your point of difference. Just need to sort of get your scrum and everything else up to the standard to play professional rugby." And you know, he helped me a massive amount, and I suppose he opened my eyes a small bit in that in that way. Now, Murph, by the way, I should mention here, just on, on, on that theme of getting around the pitch, Murph has been boasting in recent podcasts about what he would do to Finley Beelham in a 50-metre sprint. What? Is there anyone in here that doesn't think I could take Finley Beelham in a sprint? What would your estimate be without having seen Murph run? Um, I'd say you take him. I'd say you have a good stride on you, Chief. Um, well, <laughs> yeah. fi- that didn't Beelham work out as expected. I was hoping for something completely different. Um, there. No, we we'll just move on now, because Tiger's going to say yeah. something nice about yeah. me, so that's fine. That's, you that's you're involved... Nice. Uh, in a pretty key moment that you didn't want to be involved in in the Australia game, you were the player tip-tackled by Dean Mum. Now, he only got a yellow card at the time. Were you expecting him to see red? I didn't know what to expect, really, um, because it was in a ruck. It was kind of it was slow, and it didn't, it didn't hurt um, because I kind of just break the fall. Us, yeah, I break my fall with my elbow. So at the time, you're thinking, oh, this is definitely yellow. Is it a red? I don't know. And... Turned out to be a yellow, and look, in fairness to me, came up after the match and said, so, "Sorry, and look, nice. I, I, you can't be, think that you know he did that intentionally." You know, Th- those tack- well, for a while there was an edict about those tackles. I don't know; it seems to have gone away a little bit. But when you're the player in that position, I'm sure it's pretty rare you're scared on the rugby field. Obviously, you can't go in with that attitude. But at moments like that, when you've lost control of your own sort of body, is there is there uh, are you a bit fearful about how you're going to land? Maybe not, and maybe that's probably the wrong situation for it because you know it's so slow. Maybe if you're running into someone, they tackle you, and then you go horizontal or your legs go yay high, and you, you see yourself land on your head. That can be, get a bit scary, but probably that one there, no. Dean Mum, by the way, is, when he got that yellow there, he was cited, escaped punishment, Murph, after the Independent Disciplinary Committee concluded the offence wasn't worthy of a red card. Boo! <laughs> now, I know. I know, Ty, that you're embarrassed with the Lions speculation at the moment, but beside your article in the Sunday Times today was, these are popping up every week at this stage, the Sunday Times, four of their writers picked their Lions team, not just squad, and you were in three of them. It's actually Peter O'Reilly was the only one, the only Irish writer who didn't have you in, so you can take that Wearing up with Wearing the you. green jersey there, Peter. Have you, have, you allowed yourself to start, yeah, have you allowed yourself to start thinking about that at all? Now, you can give us the stock answer and then the actual answer. <laughs> Peter, like I already did the interview in for the paper, he put me in it like yeah. snake. Um, <laughs> backstabbing. Um. No, honestly, I said before, and look, I think when you think of the Lions, you think of so many great rugby players, and you know the tradition that goes with it. And on paper, I've only started four games for Ireland, two games in the Champions Cup for for Leinster. So, I think you put those statistics to a Lions jersey, it doesn't really add up for me at the minute. And um, Look, I'd, I'd like to see how the next few weeks go because you know Northampton have a, a very very good scrum and the Six Nations probably a good barometer because you know Southern Hemisphere teams don't tend to scrum for penalties where uh, up in the Six Nations when the weather's a bit dirtier and um, you're playing the likes of England, France, Italy, you know, they they try to gain access into the game with scrum penalties. So that'll probably be a good better barometer to see where we're at and uh, and try to drive towards. Okay, that's the stock answer. <laughs> uh, is it something it's incredible how far you've come in such a short space of time internationally as you say you've only played a limited amount of, of, of uh, Heineken Cup of European Cup games but you've come on so strong you were picked in the World Cup squad after starting as a substitute in the warm against Wales was your, was your debut you know, that seems like a very short space of time between that and starring against Australia against New Zealand against these kind of teams the confidence that you take into those games is that something that comes naturally to you do you have to work at making yourself believe that, you know, I, I, I can put it up to these guys and I can help a team beat New Zealand? Um, I suppose I was tipping around the squad there for a while and I was in training, I was involved in, you know, the World Cup, and the Summer Tour, a bit of Six Nations, so you get a bit of experience that way. Um, I suppose you're looking into a black hole really, knowing what you're going to come up against New Zealand because I've never played them before and, you know, I have to say, when you're really well prepped up, 
that leads to confidence, that clarity of your role, the job that's um, expected of you, I suppose. So you have confidence in the team and you have confidence in the lads around you. And you know there's some lads with a huge amount of experience there that will pull you through the tough times as well. Listen, we wish you well for the rest of the season against Northampton in the couple of games and then for the rest of the season. Let's hear it for the rampaging fullback and the Horswood under 14 Gaelic football team, Tyke Furlong. Thanks a million, Tyke. That's the second time it's gone off. They never go home, they never go home, they never go home, those, those, those boys. <laughs>